Okay. Hello and welcome back to the 4 Minute Mull, which is my attempt at trying to bring you some sports science insight in under 4 minutes. And if you are wondering about that specific duration, all I will say is that you can be very grateful that I think that the sub 2 hour marathon is a load of nonsense for now. Otherwise, this would have been called the sub 2 hour view and you would have been in here for the long haul. In the interest of time, let's get straight to it. What I want to tackle today, if you will pardon the pun, is something that came up towards the end of last year, but because everyone was on sort of Christmas holiday breaks, didn't really get the opportunity to address it. And I actually think it's a really important issue and it concerns head safety and concussion risk in the sport of rugby. But those of you in the United States, you'll know that there's a similar issue facing American football, ice hockey, even, even normal football or soccer, as you might call it, has the same problem. Now, the incident in question, which you can see over my right shoulder here, came in a match that was played last year in the Northern Hemisphere. And the player, Manu Tuolangi, executes this tackle, for which he is not punished on the field, but is later cited by the match commissioner. And what that, that means is that the commissioner is basically asking whether this tackle was worthy of a harsher punishment than was given on the field, and should he be retrospectively punished and potentially banned. So I'm going to give the ending away a little bit here and say that what eventually happens is that the citing process decides that that should not have been a red card and so therefore Tuolangi will not serve a ban. However, they did say, and this is important, is that there was foul play, that it should have been punished with a penalty and a yellow card. And that's an important conclusion that we'll come back to shortly. However, the reason I wanted to bring it up on today's four minute mull is because some of the reaction to the fact that he was being cited and to the process was quite telling and I guess in a way concerning when you consider where the sport needs to move for the sake of player safety, particularly around the head. And this is an example of a tweet that was posted by a guy called Brian O'Driscoll, who's an absolute legend of the sport, one of the greatest ever rugby players. And in it, he says that the sport must have gone soft if Tuolangi is being cited for that tackle. I want you also just to read this. This is a part of a statement that was made by the the director of rugby for the player in question, Tuolangi. And in it, he says the following. I think we've got to make sure we don't pander to the health and safety issues. It's a collision sport. It's a highly physical game and played by tough players. And I don't think we need lawmakers making it you know, more difficult to actually get that physical dominance and play the game how it's intended to be played. So I think what that quote and the tweet from O'Driscoll and the replies and discussion to it indicates is A, the rugby's got a cultural challenge that needs to be overcome, which we'll come back to. But, and B, there's a very important and serious conversation needs to be had about how far do we go to ensure safety, especially to the head, compared to how far do we go before we start to compromise one of the most valuable and important characteristics of the sport. And nobody wants to get rid of the physical aspect. We understand that it is a physical game and there are aspects of physical dominance that are important to maintain. But at the same time, nobody in their right mind should be telling you that there is not an issue around concussion and head injury in the sport. For the last eight seasons in professional rugby, concussion incidence has gone up and up and up and up. And we absolutely have to get a handle on that for the future of the sport. And one of the ways to do that is by introducing and then ensuring that laws around head contact are policed properly. There should be zero tolerance on contact with the head of an opponent. And that's why the decision by that siding process is so important, because in saying that it was foul play and that it should have been sanctioned with a yellow card, it draws a line in the sand and it says that in future, any similar tackle should be punished with a penalty and a card. And I think that's really important. Equally important, but something that I think is not helpful to the discussion is when we start to introduce words like soft and pandering to health and safety and lawmakers interfering, I think it's destructive to the debate because what that does is it creates this position where safety and toughness are mutually exclusive concepts. It's basically saying that you can either be safe or you can be tough, but that you can't be both at the same time. Now, we want the hits in rugby to be big. You can tackle the guy so hard that his fillings pop out but don't make contact with the head. And so that's where the compromise must be sought. And I hope that 2018 is the year in which we can do that so that it doesn't look like safety versus toughness in this relationship, but that the two are actually 
achieved simultaneously. So let's hope that we can have that discussion moving forward for the benefit of the sport and for the safety of the players who play it. That's it from this week's Form and Mull. Please join me next time when I share with you whatever happens to be going on in my head. Thanks a lot.